Yes. Blinka, 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 blinka. Okay. Um, big ish news. Um, we are approaching Circuit Python nine, and with Circuit Python nine, that means a bunch of new features and more. Um, what things can people look forward to in Circuit Python nine? Okay, what, there's actually a lot of stuff that's in Python nine. So it's been cooking. It's been simmering on the stove for a while. Big updates are we've merged uh, MicroPython 119, 120, and 121 in. So a lot of core library changes, including the MPY format has changed, I think even twice. So, um, you know, we're going to, um, you see some language improvements, which is great. Uh, and Scott's also working on some, you know, memory improvements in nine, but uh, you definitely will have to, you know, if you're upgrading to nine, you're gonna have to update all your library files as well. I think we just updated the bundle to create MPYs for nine. Um, you know, you can see the list here, some other stuff. We've got like more USB host support, um, some tweaks to um, uh, I squared C peripheral, now I squared C target. Um, you know, one thing I chat about Scott is that we removed stuff like display IO show, which I think was going to break a bunch of code. So we now, oh, that, was, that was a question in the chat. Why was it removed? I actually ask Scott, there's reasons. I don't, I don't know the API reasons for it, but there is, must be, there must be good reasons because Scott doesn't make breaks unless, uh, it really improves something. Um, but now it gives you a warning. So, you know, it, it doesn't, um, fully remove it, but it will tell you that it's about to be removed, which is kind of nice because otherwise you're, you'll, or sorry, if you, if it's removed, it'll tell you how to change your code to fix it. It's a, it's a very simple fix. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, idea five for ESP support has been updated. And I think that's actually improved a lot of um, Wi-Fi and display stability for the Espressif line as well. Okay. And then um, the other thing that we were going to talk about this week is CircuitPython Blinka Python compatibility layer now supports Raspberry yes. Pi 5. Yes, Melissa, who uh, is manages the Blinka CircuitPython layer, which lets you people use CircuitPython libraries and the API on Raspberry Pi computers. Um, a perfect example of why it was such a good idea that we had this compatibility layer because uh, stuff changed and broke. Um, when the Raspberry Pi 5 came out, our Pi GPIO no, no longer works on the Raspberry Pi, and that was what we were using as the underlying layer. Uh, Melissa has updated to use now uh, libgpiod, uh, much like other single board computers. It's nice and fast. She wrote a playground note about how it's like you know nice and speedy uh, for bit banging, which is great. Um, it you now goes to the RP1 chip, and um, so far so good. You know, if, if folks have issues um you know with installing blinka or using our circuit path on libraries let us know it seems like i squared c and gpio and spi support has has is pretty much all working um and then hopefully as we learn more about the rp1 chip um, i believe there's pwm support there's native pio slash neopixel there's maybe analog input support um we will add that to blinka as well right so that'll be really nice all the apis that we already have had that people are using for microcontrollers we'll be able to add even more of them to the raspberry yeah. pi and um in case you're wondering what we're all about if you go to circuitpython.org um circuitpython is kind of our sponsored project we have our team that does it um we're funding it to have like the best experience we also uh, help fund micropython um, CircuitPython is like the educational fork that works with lots of boards. We now have 448 boards. So right now, the 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 most of the boards are non-Adafruit. Yeah, if you do flip filters, yeah, and you click on Adafruit, which is like right over there, click yeah. on that, make it, then you can press the X. Yeah. So we have almost 95. 100. Yeah. So we have 100, and there's 448. So we're less than a quarter. Yeah. And, like 20, 20. and so that's important to us because we we want to be clear about what we're doing. You know, we and do, the top boards here, they're not for me. Yeah, we do open source hardware and we publish all the designs and schematics and code and we want you to use it and do cool stuff. Just don't, you know, say you're for it. That's it. Come up with a different name. And then for MicroPython, CircuitPython, uh, specifically our CircuitPython work, um, we want to make it easy for anyone to take a board and have CircuitPython on it. And we don't care if it's our hardware or not. So we we want to see more boards out there. We can say things like that. We could use that as a like marketing thing, like open and it's great, it's free. But we also want to demonstrate it. And so what we do is we, we have this list of boards that CircuitPython runs on. And if you just look at which boards from which companies, Adafruit is not the most. And it's important to us. It means other people are using it. So 
Um, that was that was the goal, and it looks like it's still happening. Um, and so if you're doing hardware and you don't want to maintain firmware for your device forever, and you just want to just just work, um, you can take a look at some of these boards and be like, oh, that's a cool board. I can just have CircuitPython on, or I can make my own board, spin up my own board. And I always get all those updates. No, I don't have. And also, I was saying actually, there's two boards that she's was trying to find images for, and so it actually is 450. But like, we don't have. Yeah, we'll get there. So we'll update it. Still. And there are different products. Yeah. You know, you can always buy some to support us. But again, like we, this is one of the things we wanted to do for the world. Just like, here's a very cool, easy way to do Python on hardware, um, built on MicroPython. Has all the cool things you can do with lots and lots of different hardware. One of the reasons that we made CircuitPython is so it runs on a variety of chips, and. Here it is. So that's our Python on hardware news this week. You can get this update for daily, delivered to your inbox every single week, spam free, tracking free. You don't even need to sign up. You can just go to Adafruit Daily and look at the link. That's right. It's also on GitHub. It's also a permanent web page. We really want to make it easy to do stuff. Our RSS, you said you know. Yes, our RSS feed. Yeah. 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 So we 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 do that and uh do Google Reader it. Yeah, and one of the things for folks who pay really close attention to stuff is we've been um, de googleifying a lot of our properties. You know, Google Analytics, uh, when you have a website, you pretty much everyone just put Google Analytics on their website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And over the years, if we, as we've developed our properties, we're like, how do we get out of this? Because we don't, we don't make money on views. We don't make money on ads. We don't make money on mining your personal information or selling it or doing anything with it. So why don't we just remove it? So we've been going through the process of making sure like there's things if we want to make sure we know like what guide is most popular there's things that analytics are good for but we also don't want to have all that information because we don't use it why why have all this information about what browser you have what country you're coming from who cares we don't care we don't use it so um that's also important to us for you for daily um you don't need to sign up as a newsletter we use mailchimp and they have their own you know tracking with urls because people care about what's tracked we don't so you can also just get it as a standalone web page as well. We're kind of committed to this, and that's why I kind of mentioned it every week, because um, I I know I know folks are you just assume we're like the least we're like this we're CEU we are as search engine unoptimized. Well, I, you know, and that's good because it's hard to even use web search now. I know Google search doesn't even work. But um, I I know the the tendency is to just assume the worst. And think that whatever you sign up for is you're just gonna like put banners everywhere. You're gonna get spam forever. But we work really hard at this, and I and I. But I also know like, because sometimes it's frustrating is is people just like, well, I, I know you're just gonna sell my information. It's like well, we don't do that. But I get it. I get it. It's like if you live in this world, what it's not a bad bet sometimes to assume that. So, anyways, 